Welcome to Online Offscript, where we discuss trending topics and all things new on the internet. I'm Mira McNitt, the social media director. And I'm Yairi Mashai, the business development director. This week, we are talking about marketing to a black audience. So our guests today are Desmond Walker and Alan Shelton, the partners at Narratent, a Chicago-based black-owned digital marketing agency. Narratent was founded in August of 2019 and has since expanded to Washington, D.C. Their four core principles are eliminate the box, tell it like it is, raise the bar, and add real value. And so some of their notable clients include NBC Sports, Universal Music Group, Diego, and more. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Alan and Desmond, could you tell us a little bit about Narratent and the company's story, how it got started, why it's here? Sure. So what Narratent uh, is, is a digital marketing agency or, or firm. Uh, Narratent got its start a few years back uh, around 2019, uh, pretty much as a as a as a joint freelance effort, I would say, between Alan and myself. So uh, essentially what Alan did was he one day hit me up and said, you know, what's up, man? I'm I'm working my marketing job. You're, you're working your marketing job. <laughs> but I also got someone that I met who wants to pay me a hundred bucks to design this website for uh, his 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 nonprofit organization. And so I'm sure as you both can can imagine uh, how a lot of stories go is, you know, you have those those itty bitty small chunks of opportunities that tend to either come your way or, you know, you go chasing down and uh, it makes sense for you at the time. And, and that's what uh, having a, a conversation like that did for Alan and I. So um, what we did was we we essentially essentially just started taking that serious over um, the course of about a year or two. And, you know, through a pandemic and through more frequent uh, freelancing, getting furloughed from uh, companies like myself, uh, you know, pretty much a, a runway opened up. And that runway allowed us to kind of snowball those micro opportunities into like real deal, real life, you know, opportunities. And so um, long story short, uh, we pretty much uh, over that course of time managed to start um, talking to some bigger companies, bigger projects started to form. And um, we decided to, to actually form it into a, a real life agency. So. Um, what we are now is a team of myself, Alan, along with uh, two other employees. Um, we work on uh, a myriad of projects, but all seem to kind of interweave between um, what our mantra is, which is making life interesting and starting movements. So what does that actually mean? That means we, uh, in a way, kind of weave one strong thread through companies that are doing just that. They're making life interesting. And in particular, they're adding some form of equity, I would say, into what their primary audiences usually are, which is you know Black or African-American uh, audiences or communities. And so um, that's what, you know, we're scratching our itch with. And, you know, um, we're still relatively, I would say, uh, small and young, but still um, kind of like a sleeping giant that we're we're trying to trying to awake here. So um, that's a little bit about our story. Do y'all specifically field the companies that you do marketing for? Are you looking for a specific um, voice or niche? Are you looking specifically for companies reaching black audiences? Anything like that? Yeah, so we don't necessarily build the uh, the companies like from scratch or anything like that. Uh, typically, companies come to us or we reach out to companies that are looking to uh, either one target a black or brown audience or, um, or a company that is black or, or brown or black owned. Um, so what we do is uh, we like to uh, look at ourselves as the type of agency that gets down in the mud with you, right? Like we want to understand your pain points. We want to understand where you want to go, where you are currently. And, and help, right? And, and consult, not to say like, hey, you want to pay us? Well, all right, we'll do exactly what you want. Like, no, let's let's push against this a little bit, right? This this is great. This isn't so great. This is in the middle. Let's make it better. Um, so we help like uh, develop a brand or a tone of voice that is going to genuinely reach the audience that they're looking to reach. And we'll get into this more with other questions, I assume. But um, that's what it's all about. We understand that, you know, you can say things or create things that look good or sound good. But I think it's more so about the um, the authenticity that you have in what you say and, and the type of um, marketing that you put out. 
Yeah, honestly, I, I think that perfectly leads into the next question that we have. Uh, so if companies want to target a black audience, what do you believe what do you believe are the essential or like crucial steps for that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, and it's probably a question that, you know, we, we went to inbound and we went to all these conferences and they literally have entire sessions about how to do it. Like, how can you do this? And me and Dez always look to ourselves like sometimes I feel like it's, it's over overcomplicated. But I think the, the, the answer that we would say that I would say is be unafraid to not know. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody knows everything. Right. You, you ask anybody like how to you know, I don't know about this subject matter or I don't know about, you know, how to reach this. It's OK not to know. But when you not know, you have to take that next step and do the research and understand, like, how can I again, like what we push on our agency is how do we get into your shoes? How do we get into your pain point or your or good point, whatever the case may be and understand. So what comes out of our mouths in terms of advertising or marketing from a digital perspective is authentic it real it actually hits the spot that you understand it speaks that language that you actually speak not a language that i think you might speak and then i come out and be wrong and it's just like ah you know it's one of those situations so i think as, as simply as it's put just understanding and being unafraid to know um and and i think that's once you do that and understand like hey i'm willing to say like hey i don't know but i want to learn and this is how i'm going to learn i'm going to bring these people i'm going to bring in somebody black or brown in because they have that experience that I don't have, right? Not because of my fault, because this is not the life that I've, that I've lived, right? Um, but I'm going to bring somebody that has that understanding or somebody that can relate or somebody that can bring somebody else in that can relate. And then I can have more um, of that authentic uh, marketing, if that makes sense. I completely yeah. agree with that. And like having black and brown people are having a seat at the table definitely helps that because we've seen time and time and again, so many digital marketing campaigns from really, really huge companies really like fall on deaf ears because they say things or do things that are actually very tone deaf because there was no black or brown person at the table to say, hey, maybe we shouldn't word this that way or maybe we shouldn't um, do this advert like that. I remember a very good example being, I think it was like Pepsi or something like that where Kendall Jenner came up to the front of like the, the line of police officers holding a Pepsi like that was going to solve problems. But like, Obviously, there wasn't very many people of color at the table to be like, mm, maybe we should rethink that. So I think definitely having people at the table to, to voice their opinions and say, hey, I've been through this experience as a black person, as a brown person. This doesn't this is going to sound very tone deaf to all people, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I I just on a smaller scale, I saw a tweet the other day from Netflix where they it was about the new Wednesday show. And they said that Wednesday was queen of the snapback. And oh yeah, instead of the clap, I, instead of the clap back, instead of a clap um, back, which I saw yeah. that and I was like, the hat. And then right. a, a woman, a black woman, retweeted it, and she's like, "This is what happens when Netflix fires all of their black and brown copywriters, and right. now you have people who aren't even using the terms correctly." Exactly. Um, it's a great show, by the way. I don't know if you all have seen it. I binged it, and it's a it's a great, it's an amazing show. <laughs> it. It's on my to-dos, uh, but now I'm going to push it higher up on the list. Oh, yeah. Please do. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we talked about people needing to, like, dig in and get in there and really come to understand what are fast and hot tips for companies to avoid coming off as performative or disingenuous, especially when they're marketing to a black audience? I would definitely say, like, one of the main things is – don't just put out content and campaigns out there for the sake of it without any kind of like back work or like reasons behind it. Don't just put like a black person on the face of your campaign, but internally you're not treating your black staff with the same, you know, regard, you know? So making sure that your outward message is as focused as your inward message is really important. I know in like 2020, so many companies came out with loads of DEI statements and things like that, which was obviously great to see. But whether or not the, um, you know, the follow through is actually real is we, I guess we'll never know. So it's just making sure that what you're saying in your campaigns, what you're saying outwardly, you're practicing it inwardly as well. Yeah. No, Irene is talking that talk. I mean, um, took the words right out of my mouth, like from, from your point, Irene, about uh, number one, making sure that your talent and your staffing boxes are checked, right? Because as much as what the end product is, is a tweet or an Instagram post or a billboard, whatever it may be, we all know that there's a person uh, that's 
that that's behind that. And if that person can't necessarily understand the cultural nuances that go into a that, that should go into a message, um, the con- consideration around um, someone's real life experiences versus just what that front cover on the medium as far as advertising and marketing goes, then it's kind of a, a, a recipe for disaster, as we always uh, see often. And uh, beyond that, just like you said, pretty much doing doing the homework. You know, if, if, if it's a social media campaign, are you as a brand properly conducting social listening as a prelude step to a content strategy or a campaign rollout so that you can uh, know what conversations you should be a part of, what conversations you should not be a part of, and wherever else, you know, in between. Yeah. I mean, the last thing I will add to um, just to kind of wrap it all up is it's actually caring about what you're pushing out. Right. Not pushing out because it's going to be good for sales or because it looks good. Whatever the case may be, it's actually having that genuine care to actually be behind a movement or, or a campaign that you're doing to actually help people. You know, whatever that looks like, you know, because we understand that black audiences, really any audience can sniff out BS from a mile away. Right. And they'll be quick to tell you about it as well you know and obviously that's always a, a thing that we have in the back of our minds as marketers like hey i don't want to i'm leg- i legit care i don't want to come off as disingenuous but when you actually care that's the best way not to come off as disingenuous because i mean as we know when you actually care about something it seeps through your pores right it it, it has that that feeling the words jump off the page our our speech our passion and the way the way we talk during an interview or whatever the case may be is it's in our voice you know so i think it's you know, looking for things that, you know, not being everything for everyone. Just because this company, this company is doing it doesn't mean that we have to do it because, you know, because we, we believe that. Our agency and really any agency, I guess, we can't put ourselves in a box of being everything for everyone. We have to be the right thing for the right person or the right audience, right? And it doesn't happen all the time, right? He's like, hey, this is not really our lane right now, but this is. So I'm going to really lean into this lane and really make it good because I care about this lane. And the audience is going to respond to that. So yeah. that's one thing I'll add. Just to jump on something you said, Alan, when you say that black people can sniff out the nonsense from a mile away, that's why I love Twitter. Because black Twitter, they do not play games. Like any kind of like nonsense campaigns that have come up, black Twitter is like on it in a second. And um, that kind of stuff gets blown up really, really quickly. So it's really important for brands to be able to have you know that understanding before they're pushing things out. Because... We will let you know <laughs> if it does sound like nonsense from our end and we'll let you know quickly. And that cam- campaign will go down very fast. I think also to both of your points, uh, another point uh, worth making, too, is is the history behind how, you know, uh, media and, and advertising and, and marketing. There was a time when it, it, it was disingenuous, like very intentionally. There was a time when. You know, whether we're talking African-Americans or any other multicultural audience or group where we were completely ghost, non-existent. You know, you couldn't uh, flip through a a magazine. You couldn't flip through a newspaper. You couldn't turn on a uh, TV commercial and find uh, black faces or black stories or black experiences. And when you did, uh, it was purposely disingenuous. It was it was it was a mockery of uh the culture. It wasn't reflective of the culture. And so now while, you know, obviously there have been inroads made to all of that, it still leaves a very small uh, room of margin uh, left for error. You know what I mean? So uh, when, when you get it right or when you get it wrong, it's it's all going to be right there for everyone to judge. When I think of marketing specifically, like in, I don't want to say like two, but like involving the black community so there's obviously like products where it's like this is made for like black hair or like this is like made with an intention so obviously the marketing is going to involve people who are black but then there's also products where it's a product that has no like specific audience in its production but it does have a campaign that i from the outside look like it speaks to the black community and i'm specifically thinking about sprite um like i feel like their commercials are always like very uh, leaning towards the black community. Are there any campaigns that y'all have worked on where someone came to you and their product wasn't specifically for any one group, but they were like, we want to make this campaign work towards the black community, but speak to everyone? Have you have? I know it's a very specific question. Yeah, one that comes to mind is um, 
as we know, COVID, um, which I still can't believe is about to be three years in March since the, the world shut down. That's just kind of hard to believe. But um, we actually had a, a, a regional client. It was, it was a hospital in Chicago. Um, and they came to us and wanted to, uh, the emphasis was getting people in the black and brown community to get tested uh, for COVID, right? Because we understand that black and brown communities weren't getting tested at a certain point, like at an alarming rate versus, you know, our white counterparts and other uh, ethnicities. So, um, so while that was targeted, the message and the stories that we were able to uncover and, and shoot and, and, and push out was kind of like a, a sounding song to, to everybody that can, can relate, right? They, we talked about, you know, people were talking about, you know, being a mother, right? Having to transition. How do I be a really good mother while, while this is going on and being a doctor and this is going on, right? We felt like even though it was intended to be targeted towards the black community, you know, everyone could relate to that in so many shape or form. Like, hey, I, my identity kind of shifted a little bit during the pandemic, a lot of it in the, in the pandemic. And I had to reevaluate who I was as a man, as a woman, as anyone, um, and allow that to, to come out on the other side and still be okay three years later, two years later, whatever the case may be. Um, so I think that's the true test of a really good campaign is that it's targeted, of course, right? But it also kind of crosses over in a lot of ways, like a good song. Right? No one song is targeted to, you know, the black community might listen to it at an alarming rate other than other communities, but if that song is good enough, it crosses right on over and everybody's listening to it, right? So I think it's one of those situations where you just have to, um, that, that's when you know you did your job really well. So I think that's an example I have that really, really checks that box. Another uh, kind of case study example for me is a company uh, that we worked with earlier this year by the name of Stretch. And uh, what Stretch does is, is interesting because it's it's not so much that they are, uh, it was a case where they were targeting black audiences, but it was a case where they took a look at their product and realized that, uh, unfortunate as it may be, and I'll get into that in a second, their audience uh, was majority uh, African Americans or Black people, and um, what Stretch does is they provide uh, financial uh, and job opportunities for people who are formerly incarcerated. So, if you can see connect the dots there now, it's like, all right, we recognize that uh, our our core is uh, in empowering uh, this particular set of uh, people who have had this previous part of, uh, of their life happen, right? Um, now we're gonna put them in, uh, together with tools that can obviously change the narrative and whatnot of their story. And so knowing who, you know, statistically that person typically, uh, what they typically look like, their typical experiences and so on, um, let's find the right marketing channels to tell that message through. Uh, let's find people or a team, even if we have to come uh, to the outside uh, with an agency and, and, and tap that knowledge and that expertise. Let's do that so that we've done our due diligence um, to, to do the rest. I guess my follow-up question is, um, obviously when you're running these types of campaigns, like we said, they're aimed towards everybody, but of course, based on the types of campaigns they are, they end up swaying more towards um, African-Americans, black people, brown people. How do you feel the consumers resonate with those types of ad campaigns when they're not those, not a black person or a brown person, but they know they still fit that kind of category? Say someone who was previously incarcerated, but they are a white person and they see an advert and it's about stretch, but it's including black and brown people. Do you think that they feel that, you know, they're not really being represented and they can't really resonate with the advertisement or the campaign? Um, I, I personally don't think so. Um, I think it's about the, the relatability, right? Either either I feel like you, either you can relate to it in some way, shape or form, Not maybe not directly, maybe indirectly. You might have somebody that you know of a friend that you passed one time that can relate to the story, whatever the case. Um, and, it, and, and it hits back. But honestly, I think a really good campaign doesn't necessarily need to target everyone. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that, that's the point of what you're doing, right? If you talk to anybody and say, hey, you're selling a product, who do you want to sell it to? I want to sell it to everyone. This is like, okay, so let's <laughs> condense that down and, and make sure that you have your niche, um, your niche, and then you can, you know, expand out from there or where, where it makes sense. Um, so I think in order to have that really, really type of marketing that's sticky, as we call it, you have to draw on those personal strings, right? You have to try to get really micro um, and expand from there because that's the only way you're going to 
get people to, to come and then keep on coming back because they see themselves in your marketing. All right. And um, it's hard to do that at a macro level because, you know, <laughs> you, you as you start to condense it down, it starts to get more personal and um, have that relatability. So hopefully that answers your question. But I feel like you have to you have to be targeted like that, um, at least from a from a narrative perspective. Um, so you can actually get that the return that you want. Yeah. The reason why I asked is because of something that Desmond had said earlier. It's like we all know that, you know, previously in marketing and ad campaigns, even opening a magazine, reading the news, whatever, you rarely would see black people on there. And obviously it was a very big issue of representation for us as black people to be like, hey, I don't see myself in anything um, in the media. Yeah. Um, and so I was just kind of wondering on the flip side what that looks like when it's the other way around. Yeah, that's a great question. So when you're going down to the micro to figure out like exactly who the campaign is going to speak to at that smaller level, what is y'all's like your technique for figuring out who that's going to be? Do the do the companies come to you and they're like, we want to speak to this group because they're buying a lot? Or do you do you dive in? And if you dive in, how do you figure out who that's going to be? Yeah. So so for us, and I'll let Des chime in as well. Um, but for us, it starts with the research. And it, we, Des mentioned it, so, social listening. So a company comes to us and they're like, hey, you know, this particular audience is buying this product, for example, right? Like, okay, that's great. That's easy. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're already attracted to that. Now, where are the opportunities, right? Where, where are the rocks that you haven't lifted yet? Um, that we can use to, to to double down on that. Yeah, we have this audience in the bag, right? Okay, so like, so let's let's add some variety, or let's let's make sure that you know we understand completely what this particular audience or, or adjacent to it is connecting with. Um, what are the sentiments, as we call it, right? Is it positive, negative, and how can we use um, the positive ones, of course, but even the negative ones, the, the pain points, to really bring you know the need or the desire for this particular product to the forefront. And I feel like, you know, that's where it has to begin go with the research and understanding, you know, every single segment of your audience, even the ones that you kind of shy away from, like, yeah, we really don't connect with this audience. And a lot of companies <laughs> take that and be like, all right, well, we just don't connect with them. It's just like, oh, hold on. Like, let, let's let's understand why. Like, even if it doesn't lean, even though we don't, even if we might not lean into that way, let's understand why, because you never know, like this person might have somebody else that will connect to your product. How can we use that to bring it back around? So, that's where it starts. Um, and it sounds simple, but at the end of the day, you'll be surprised uh, where a lot of companies, they, they, they haven't they haven't done that step, you know, and they wonder why they're like, hey, how come I can't really tap into this audience, you know? And I think that makes it make more sense. How do you kind of like try to convince certain companies or brands who are like, oh, we don't really, you know, deal with or we don't really have much of an audience of this kind of community, wh whatever it might be, and be like to them, hey, actually, after doing our research, we realized that, this community does actually enjoy your products and here is the reasons why do you think do you feel that that sometimes takes some convincing and how do you tend to do that yeah in, in many cases yeah i ran half of the effort is making the pitch on an idea right uh so in, in those cases i think it's, it's a mix of uh data and facts obviously as we talk about especially in the digital realm uh, but also common sense <laughs> in a lot of ways as well. You know, everybody sometimes telling someone something is common sense may feel a little, you know, like you're shaking the table a little bit. Right. Uh, but that's perfectly OK to do as well. And, and I love doing that. I love, you know, being able to challenge uh, uh, one of our clients or just a, a, a company in general to uh, go ahead and, 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 and make that small bet. And I mean, what's. What's the worst that can happen from, you know, being being wrong about it? And if we're right about it, then we got a pleasant, pleasant surprise. You know what I mean? Um, and to get a little bit more uh, practical, I think there's some some correlation to, to what we're talking about is oftentimes um, when we're when we're managing or heading up a social strategy for a client, you know, 90 percent of our conversation is around content and creative and so on and so on, which is right, rightfully so, right? Um, but oftentimes our clients and just anyone in general, can be it can be easy to lose sight of what happens after content is pushed to our, you know, our customer our audiences, um, how that community, as we like to call it, gets retained and how we can set up different uh, 
ways for our audiences to talk back at us, you know, so that it's less of a guessing game, you know, as to who they are, what they care most about. Um, in many cases, we'll recommend uh, brands set up groups on channels like uh, uh, Facebook or uh, LinkedIn so that that community uh, facet starts to get formed. And before you know it, you're, you're guessing a whole lot less about your customer, who your customers are, what they care about, because they're now they're, they have channels to interact back with you uh, with or interact even with each other with. And, you know, you never know what, what answers or, or new things you'll learn along the way doing it like that. Okay. So we're wrapping up. Okay. Obviously this is a big topic. It's an important topic to make sure that you're marketing towards not just like all people, but specifically towards people. But if y'all could each give a couple sentences, why do you think that marketing towards black and brown audiences is an important topic that more people need to be talking about? Oh my God, I have so many things I could say. Okay. <laughs> um, I think my top thing is like, Black and brown people have so much power in the market. Like people sometimes, it's been overlooked for entirely too long, the amount of power that black and brown people have in the market. When you think of a lot of like trends that you see in marketing campaigns on social media, a lot of them do come from black and brown creators. So why would you not want to market to those people who can spread the word about your brand, spread the word about your company? There's so much value in um, the black and brown communities of you know, the United States of the world. And the um, kind of the percentage of black and brown people is always growing. Um, and so it just makes, it makes sense not only in like a way to care, like Alan, you was mentioning, but like it makes sense also for your the sake of your business. Why would you like take away like 30% or whatever it might be of your audience when you can, you know, speak out to them? For sure. Um, and just to add to that, I would say, as I already started to put it, black and brown people control the culture, right? They can they, they control digital media. Like it's it's not it's not a secret, um, you know. And and I think uh, when you look back and you just look at your feed or whatever the case may be, you, you see it, right? So I think you know us advertising to the black and brown community is essential, right? It's, it's always going to be essential, but you, advertising in the right ways, like I said, that feels authentic, right? That kind of like, hey, I'm not using you for a money grab or just to make my brand elevate higher but i'm i'm actually trying to learn i'm trying to i'm trying to you know i'm trying to get i'm trying to educate myself in this space or, or why does this resonate with you or whatever the case may be because i understand that it is important it's just like okay let let me do that and that i feel like that's more recept that's more that, that's received better from a black from a, uh you know from the black uh population when it's like i said when it's genuine like okay this person is not trying to hijack what, what I have going on or what, what I created. This person is trying to, to learn and trying to uh, allow it to be seen in, in, a, in a bigger way, right? Because I mean, I do want my voice, you know, they, I do want my voice to be heard. I do want my passions and what I wake up thinking about and going to sleep thinking about to be, you know, to the world, right? And you have that platform, so let's, let's collaborate. And I think once you do that, um, I feel like it, it, it works, right? It's not easy. And I'm not, I said it easily, but it's, it's not easy. But I, at the same time, I feel like it's very much needed and needs to be talked about. And again, last thing I would say is being unafraid to, to not know or being, or being okay with being confused for now, right? And then, and then understanding that like, I'm not going to be confused for long, where I want to take those steps to not be confused um, about advertising to black community. So the way I would sum it up is, you know, uh, as an African-American male, you know, what motivates me or entices me to take an action, make a purchase, do something that, you know, a brand wants me to do. Uh, my reasons may be completely different than uh, a, a white woman or, a, or an Iranian woman or even going beyond race, you know, a, someone of a different gender, someone of a different religion. And so it's it's such a, uh, you know, multifaceted uh uh dynamic that you know you have to you have to consider it and, and pay attention to it and so um but that said there's this there's this uh guy by the name of uh, tom burrell who founded one of the most uh one of the first multicultural marketing agencies in the country uh right here in, in chicago um bureau communications and he likes to 
sum, uh, summarize his whole stance, you know, coming into the marketing and advertising uh, game from a multicultural perspective as like, hey, uh, hey, world, you know, uh, black people, they are not just we're not just dark skinned white people. Right. We we have a different um, experience. And, and yes, that experience goes beyond just the generation we've lived in. But, you know, understand that everything we see, everything we do, everything we hear, you know, is all um, some way, shape or form been connected to uh, our, our our past, uh, our, our, our ancestors and, and, and all of that different history. So. A lot of different nuances to it, right? But um, you know, that's what that's what we do is help to you know educate uh, you know brands, businesses, and corporate America on all of those things to consider, and from there, you know, create dope <laughs> dope stuff along the way. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today. Honestly, all three of you, thank you for joining me in this conversation. It's been so good. If anyone wanted to continue the conversation with each of you. Where would you want them to reach out and find you? Yeah, so um, our website um, is just our name. Um, so so um, dot com. Um, so th that's our website. We have uh, we publish blogs and we have resources on our page as well. Um, with the, to continue to have this conversation, you just want to learn for yourself. Um, you can also reach out to our agency in that way. You know, we're also open to, to have conversation uh, on LinkedIn or whatever the case may be. All right. So it's just our names. If you just search my name or Desmond's name, you can find us on LinkedIn. We're happy to connect, happy to have deeper conversations because, I mean, we have to have these conversations. Right. It's just needed. Um, but again, just like we want to just want to give back to our community. Right. That's one of our um, our goals. Right. To, to over over whatever the case may be is to not just be an agency, but to be uh, pillars in, in, in our community and bring more black people into the digital space because we know that it's not as represented as it should be. Um, so we want to, we want to, we want to do that. We want to be a, 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 a force in that. Um, and it just starts one, one person at a time and, and, and one conversation at a time. So I'm um, definitely open to talking. Yeah. Thank you. Can and catch I mean, me on LinkedIn, obviously I'm part of the online optimism team. So either LinkedIn or on our website. Amazing. Thanks so much y'all. All right. Appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe and rate the podcast. And if there's anything you'd like to hear us discuss, reach out on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And as always, stay optimistic.